نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقه قولي واجعل لي وزيرا من اهلي اللهم فقهنا في الدين رب زدني علما اللهم اني اسالك علما نافعا رزقا طيبا وعملا متقبلا امين ثم امين السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته سوره مؤمن the sura was revealed in maka and it has 85 verses nine stanzas and is the 40th by the order of arrangement regarding its name in uh, the verse 28 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala narrates the conditions and the mannerism of a mu'min of the people uh, while uh, in the life of hazrat musa alayhi salam so because this surah has a narration of the events of the life of a mu'min so that is why it is known as surah al-mu'min it is also known as surah al-ghafir because right at the start of the surah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attribute ghafir zamb has been mentioned and uh, as far as the order of revolution the period of revolution is concerned it was sent down consecutively after surah az-zumar and it was revealed in the same period as surah az-zumar now the background of the revolution is that the disbelievers in makkah at that time they were engaged in two types of activities against prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam firstly they were trying to create every kind of suspicion against the teachings of quran and regarding prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself also and they were raising all forms of irrelevant objections and uh, they were coming up with accusations against prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and uh, the people around him the companions were also very upset with the whole um, response by the people of makkah and then one day what happened was that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was offering his prayer in kaaba that suddenly uqba bin abi muid uh, he rushed forwards and he put a piece of cloth around uh, his neck and he started twisting it so as to strangle him to death and uh, hazrat abu bakr siddiq radhiyallahu ta'ala and who who uh, got the message he immediately came rushing and he pushed away uqba bin abi muid and uh, hazrat um, uh, abu bakr siddiq radhiyallahu ta'ala and who he was struggling with that cruel man and the words on his um, on his tongue were ataqtuluna rajuli ay yaqulu rabbunallah will you kill a man just because he says that my lord is allah these were the words which were the words which have been explained that the moment of hazrat musa alaihi salam's time also said when um, pharaoh of the time tried to or planned to kill hazrat musa alaihi salam so there is the story of uh, this moment of the believer of the people of pharaoh which has been narrated here and basically it gives us three basic messages that the disbelievers they have been warned very uh, very very aggressively and strictly they have been warned and uh, prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his companions they have been taught the lesson that these wicked people might be apparently they might be very strong and powerful and you might be thinking that you are very weak and helpless against them but you should not you should you should rest assured that the might of allah whose words you are trying to raise and for whose superiority you are trying to work they it is much more than these people therefore you should only seek allah's refuge in all the conditions and you should just rely on that and you should keep yourself busy uh, fearlessly performing your mission what you are continuously at and uh, then there was uh, another third group of people in the society of makkah who were in hearts of hearts they were convinced that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was on the truth but they <coughs> 
and what the disbelieving Quraysh were just being unjust and they were being cruel. But in spite of the conviction, they were just uh, uh, silent spectators and they were like unconcerned about the conflict between truth and falsehood. So here in these verses, Allah has aroused their conscience. It is like telling them that when enemies of the truth have openly plotted in front of your eyes, it would be a very sad reflection on your part if you still remained indifferent. So it was a message for them also. Now, when we uh, start reading the surah, we will see that the surah starts with the alphabets of Hamim. <coughs> And uh, from here starts a group of seven surahs, which start with the similar alphabets, and they have been known as Hava Mim Surah, or they're also known as Ale Hamim Surah. And they have a similar sub uh, subject also. Uh, Hazrat Ibn Masood, who he said that um, he used to call them the Bajul Quran, and they've also been called as Araisul Quran. And the translation to both of them is that they've been considered as the beauty of the subject of Quran. And the basic reason for calling them by these names is because of the eloquence and because of the beauty of the subjects of these um, surahs of Quran. And uh, Ibn Abbas um, said that everything has a brain, and the brain of Quran is Ali Hamim. And Ibn Abbas also said that when reciting Quran, I reach this surah, I feel very light and entertained. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. <clears throat> تنزيل الكتاب من الله العزيز العليم غافر الذنب وقابل التوب شديد العقاب ذي التول لا اله الا هو اليه المصير الله سبحانه وتعالى says حامين the revelation of the book is from Allah, the exalted in might, the knowing, the forgiver of sin, acceptor of repentance, severe in punishment, owner of abundance. There is no deity except him. To him is the destination. In this verse number three, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is announcing his attributes. And if we connect it with the one of the last surahs of Surah Az-Zumur, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has announced that he will forgive all the sins of all the bondsmen, provided they do what? Anibu ila rabbikum wa aslimu lahu, that they return towards him and they submit to him and stay obedient to him. So very much connecting to the same message and proclamation by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here in the start of the next surah, the starting verses, Allah is narrating the traits and the attributes regarding forgiveness that he is ghafirizam. Ghafirizam is regarding the attribute of forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the sins which were, which were committed by the bondsmen in the past. And then Allah says, this is an attribute of forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding all the sins the bondsmen are liable to commit in future. So you know what this does is that this gives a ray of hope to all those who have committed sins and they are seeking forgiveness because we know that to err is human and when one repents and seeks forgiveness, even then, there are going to be conditions that despite trying to improve, there are definite, definite chances of continuing to indulge in the sin because one might be just habitual. And even then, in the habit of doing so, and even, the, and even uh, despite seeking forgiveness, even again in future, there are chances of indulging in the sin and committing the sin. So this trait of Allah that he is, although he is Ghafirism, he will forgive the sins in the past, but he promises that he 
is also Kabili Taub. So in this trait of Allah, one does not lose hope. And so we can keep on trying to improve ourselves. Allahumma ja'alni min al-tawwabina wa ja'alni min al-mutatakirin. Rabbi ghfir warham wa anta khayru rahimin. No one disputes concerning the signs of Allah except those who disbelieve. So be not deceived by their uninhibited movement throughout the land. The people of Nu denied before them and disbelieving factions after them and every nation intended a plot for their messengers to seize him and they disputed by using falsehood to attempt to invalidate thereby the truth. So I seized them and how terrible was my penalty. And this has the word of your Lord come into effect upon those who disbelieved that they are the companions of fire, those angels who carry the throne and those around it exalt Allah with the praise of their Lord. Subhanallah, wa bihamdihi, subhanallah al azim and they believe in him and ask forgiveness for those who have believed, saying, Our Lord, you have been encompassed all these things in mercy and knowledge. So forgive those who have repented and followed your way and protect them from the punishments of hell fire. In this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning about the angels who are carrying the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We learn from uh, Quran and Hadith that the angels of the, uh, which are carrying the throne, they are four in number, but Quran explains that on the day of judgment, they will be eight. And uh, in this, from here, in this verse, what we are learning is, that all these angels, the angels carrying the throne and the angels around it, that the angels which are near and close to Allah, they praise Allah, glorify and exalt Allah, and then they make a supplication for the believers. So the first thing, thing we are learning is about the manner of supplication, the manner and an etiquette of supplication, which will, inshallah, lead to the lead to the acceptance of our supplications is that before we supplicate, we glorify Allah, we praise Allah, and we exalt Allah. And then they ask for forgiveness of the believers. This is a beautiful concept we need to relate, that the angels themselves seek forgiveness for the believers. How important uh, how important faith and belief is and how dear it should be to us and how mindful and careful we should all be to protect the faith and belief of ourselves and our children also. We learn from the words of Prophet wasallam. some ahadis tell us how in different specific condition the believers, they receive the supplications of these angels. Uh, I will be now explaining a few conditions in which we learn from Hadith that the angels, they supplicate for the believers. The first being the gatherings of remembrance, the gatherings in which the, the believers, they gather and they mention the attributes of Allah, the orders of Allah, the commandments of Allah, the teachings of Allah, the book of Allah, they read, they recite, they preach, and they teach each other. So these gatherings of remembrance, there, there are angels who, who pray and who supplicate for the believers who have gathered. Like we learn from a uh, detailed, we learn from a detailed tradition, which I will be explaining in the summary of which I will be explaining in my own words. The Prophet said, Al Malaika to Sayyara, that angels they go about and they are trying to look for such gatherings of remembrance. And when they find such a gathering, then the angels they they encircle encircle the gathering and they stop all the angels who are ascending and descending from the heaven between the heaven and the earth and then all these angels they encircle the gathering and so that the space between the earth and the heaven is filled up around the gathering is filled up with these angels and these angels they lay their wings for the reception of the incoming believer the participants and they instill sakina in the hearts. They instill 
peace of mind in the hearts and souls of all those who have gathered here in this in this gathering of uh, remembrance and then they they seek forgiveness of all for all these people as long as they stay here rabbi arini ala zikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik then we learn from the words of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that when a person is busy reciting the rood for prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so as long as someone keeps on reciting the rood an angel by the order of allah keeps on reciting supplication for his forgiveness then the third that when a muslim brother we learn from the words of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that when a muslim brother pays a visit to his sick muslim brother then in the morning if he goes in the morning then from the morning till the evening 70000 angels keep on supplicating for his forgiveness and if he pays the visit in the evening then from this evening till the next morning 70000 angels keep on supplicating for his forgiveness also then prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentions that when a bondsman despite facing the misbehavior of a person just controls his anger and just keeps silent for the sake of allah then an angel keeps on asking for his forgiveness as long as he stays in this self in this state of self control another thing which we learn from hadith is that when a person spends charity in the path of allah then angels in the heaven there are two angels in the heaven which every morning and every evening these two angels of the heaven they keep on supplicating seeking forgiveness and seeking of uh, blessings and mercies of allah for all those who spend in the path of allah and they say that allah bless the wealth of all those who spend in your path and destroy the wealth of all those who do not spend in your in the path of allah similarly we also learn from the traditions that when a believer makes dua and he supplicates for a muslim brother or a sister then an angel by the order of allah keeps on asking for his forgiveness as long as he is supplicating for his muslim brother or sister and then when he stops supplicating then the angel in the end says all this be for you also and then the angel says amen we also learn from the words of the hadith that when a bondsman stays at his place of salah after completing his salah stays at his place of salah and keeps on supplicating and keeps on exalting allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then for all this period while he is busy supplicating and glorifying allah an angel keeps on praying for his forgiveness subhanallah similarly we learn from the words of hadith that when bondsmen are busy eating sahri then angels keep on as long as they are busy eating this food uh, before the before the fast then the angels keep on asking for their forgiveness from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam will also explain that when a wife is in the obedience of her husband she is obeying the orders of her husband then asking and seeking forgiveness for her are what the birds in the skies the life in the ocean the beasts in the forests and the angels in the heaven as long as she stays in the state of obedience and how are these angels what do they say and how do they supplicate now let's read all this they say our lord you have encompassed all things in mercy and knowledge so forgive those who have repented and followed your way and protect them from the punishment of hell fire our lord and admit them to gardens of perpetual residence which you have promised them and whoever was right is among their fathers their spouses and their offsprings indeed it is you who is exalted in might the wise and protect them from the evil consequences of their deeds and he whom you protect from evil consequences that day you will have given him mercy and that is the greatest attainment 
So these are the words with which, with which the angels supplicate and seek forgiveness. Hardly do we realize such a beautiful dua. Maybe we ourselves have never made such a beautiful dua for ourselves also. Allahumma ja'alni min al-tawabina wa ja'alni min al And these are the words of supplication of the angels of the throne for all those believers who do what? Who return towards Allah repenting and seeking forgiveness. Indeed, those who disbelieve will be addressed. The hatred of Allah for you was even greater than your hatred of yourselves this day in hell when you were invited to faith, but you refused. They will say, our Lord, you made our you made us lifeless twice and gave us life twice, and we have confessed our sins. So is there any exit anyway? In this verse 11, uh, Allah is giving us the concept of two lives and two deaths being blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to all his human beings. As I've already explained. All the human beings who are supposed to be created till the day of judgment by the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before the creation of Hazrat Adam alayhi salam, all the human beings who were supposed to be created, they by the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they were created and then they were presented for the pledge with the creator. For the pledge with the creator, which is mentioned in Quran, that they were all created and they were presented in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah asked them, Allah to be Rabbikum, that am I not your creator and sustainer? And they had all, all of them observing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on his throne. They had all agreed. They all agreed by consensus, unanimously, uh, unanimously, they all said, Qalu bala, that yes, we agree to the fact that you are our sustainer. Because of this pledge with the creator, it was instinctively, it became instinctive for all the human beings to recognize their creator and sustainer when they saw the creations of the universe. Now, after this pledge, all those who were created, then death attended them with the order of Allah. And this was what? This was the first death of all the human beings. This was followed by the birth when they were sent to this world. And after this, <coughs> after this is the death of this world. And then there will be the life hereafter. So this is the concept of two lives and two deaths given to all the people by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have, ex we have already gone through a death and a birth, and we are all waiting for the next and the second death and hereafter, the life hereafter. So experiencing a death and being born after that, we should not be doubting in the death and the life hereafter. They will be told that is because when Allah was called upon alone, you disbelieved. But if others were associated with him, you believed. So the judgment is with Allah, the most high and the grand. It is he who shows you his signs and sends down from the sky provisions. But none will remember except he who turns back in repentance. So invoke Allah being sincere to him in religion, although the disbelievers dislike it. He is the exalted above all degrees, owner of the throne. He places the inspiration of his command upon whom he wills of his servants to warn of the day of meeting, the day they come forth. Nothing concerning them will be concealed from Allah, to whom belongs all sovereignty that day, to Allah, the one, the prevailing. This day, every soul will be recompensed for what it earned. No injustice today. Indeed, Allah is swift in account. Allahumma hasibna hisabin yasira. And warn them of the approaching day when hearts are at the throats, filled with distress, 
for the wrongdoers, there will be no devoted friend and no intercessor who is obeyed. He knows that which deceived the eyes and that which the breasts conceal. And Allah judges with truth while those they invoke besides him judge not anything. Indeed, Allah, he is the hearing, the seeing. Have they not traveled through the, throughout the land and observed how was the end of those who were before them? They were greater than them in strength and in impressions on the land, but Allah sees them for their sins and they had not from Allah any protector. That was because their messengers were coming to them with clear proofs, but they disbelieved. So Allah sees them. Indeed, he is powerful and severe in punishment. And we certainly send Musa alayhi salam with our signs and clear authority to Pharaoh, Haman, and Karun. But they said, he is a magician and a liar. And when he brought them the truth from us, they said, kill the sons of those who have believed with him and keep their women alive. But the plan of the disbelievers is not except in error. And Pharaoh said, let me kill Musa and let him call upon his Lord. Indeed, I fear that he will change our, he will change your religion or that he will cause corruption in the land. But Musa alayhi salam said, indeed, I have sought refuge in my Lord and your Lord from every arrogant one who does not believe in the day of account. And a believing man from the family of Pharaoh who had concealed his faith said, Do you kill a man? Do you kill a man? Because he says, My Lord is Allah. Why? He has brought you clear proofs from your Lord. And if he should be lying, then upon him is the consequence of his lie. But if he should be truthful, they will strike you some of what he promises you. Indeed, Allah does not guide one who is transgressor and one who is a liar. So in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about a moment, a believer. This believer was from the family of Pharaoh, and we learn from traditions that he was a paternal cousin of Pharaoh, and he belonged to the Kipti nation. He had accepted Islam, and he had faith on the on Allah, the Rabb of Musa salam, and Harun salam, but for the fear of the tyranny of, of Pharaoh, he had kept his Iman concealed. But when he saw and he realized how Pharaoh was planning to kill Hazrat Musa salam, then he could not stand any longer and he revealed his faith and he spoke out against the tyranny of the rulers and also invited the people towards faith. Now, this story was uh, revealed in the period when uh, Prophet Sallallahu assassination was attempted by Uqba bin Abi Murayt. Publicly, he attempted murdering Prophet Sallallahu and he was stopped by Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And as I've explained already, that Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu was saying exactly the same words as Allah has related that this moment of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam's period who had risen to support and protect Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, he was saying the same words also. So this behavior, this behavior of the believer uh, during the period of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam was liked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It pleased the creator. Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam has said that the best jihad, the best jihad is to announce the truth against uh, an oppressing against a tyrant ruler. So this was the jihad this believer was doing and Allah loved and Allah really was pleased with the gesture of this moment. And that is why a surah was revealed to mention his behavior in the verses of Quran. So we need to analyze the behavior and we need to analyze the mannerism of this moment and adopt similar also. 
he said, oh, my people, sovereignty is yours today. That is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the people of the Kipti nation, has given them power and authority and rule. Oh, people, sovereignty is yours today. Your being the, you being dominant in the land, but who would protect us from the punishment of Allah if it came to us. Pharaoh said, I do not show you except what I see. I do not guide you except to the way of right conduct. This was his arrogance. And he who believed said, oh, my people, indeed, I fear for you a fate like the day of the companies, like the custom of the people of Nu and of Ad and Thamud and those after them. And Allah wants no injustice for his servants. And oh, my people, indeed, I fear for you the day of calling, the day you will return your backs fleeing. There is not from you, from Allah, any protector. And whoever Allah leaves is there is not for him any guide. And Yusuf salam, had already come to you before with clear proofs, but you remained in doubt of that which he brought to you until he died. You said, never will Allah send a messenger after him. Thus does Allah leave astray he who is transgressor and a skeptic. Verse 35, those who dispute concerning the signs of Allah without any authority having coming to them Great is hatred of them in the sight of Allah and in the sight of those who have believed. Thus does Allah seal over every heart belonging to an arrogant tyrant. And Pharaoh said, O Haman, construct for me a tower that I might reach the ways. So in the verse number 28, we learn that the Mormon, the believer, was continuously inviting them in different ways to have faith in the prophethood of Hazrat Musa salam, and to obey and to follow his teachings. And he was doing that very logically. And he was also warning them of the punishments of Allah, uh, reminding them of how the different previous nations, they had been subjected to the penalties and torments of Allah. And then uh, listening to all this, what did Pharaoh come up with? That uh, when he was making them realize the bounties and the blessings of Allah and was warning them against his punishments, then um, Pharaoh was also uh, hard enough and he was harsh enough to uh, say that he was uh, wanting to see the Lord himself. And we see in all this scenario of tyranny, what the what the believers was doing to uh, was doing that he was inviting them to accept the authorities of Allah and to surrender to Him totally and humbly. And Pharaoh was persisting in his obedience. Verse number thirty-seven. He said, "The Pharaoh said that I want to peep in." Uh, and to climb up the ways into heaven so that I may look at the deity of Musa alayhi salam. But indeed, I think that he is a liar and thus was made attractive to Pharaoh, the evil of his deeds. And he was averted from the right way and the plan of Pharaoh was not accepted in ruin. And he who believed, he said, oh, my people, follow me. I will guide you to the way of right, of the right conduct. So despite their refusal, he continued, he continued inviting them to the truth persistently and with full perseverance. <clears throat> Verse number 39, oh, my people, this worldly life is only temporary enjoyment. And indeed, the hereafter, that is the home of permanent settlement. So he was introducing to them the reality of this world and hereafter also. Now, let's sum up the behavior and the manners. <coughs> <coughs> The behavior and the manners of this moment, the believer, he had a strong faith. He was steadfast. He was inviting with full pers uh, perseverance and persistently. He was brave and courageous. He was very bold and daring. He was confident and he had a very eloquent manner of addressing, inviting and speaking to his people. He was very sincere in his invitation. He was talking logically and sincerely. 
and uh, he does not seem to fear the tyrants of the world, the leaders and the masters and the rulers of the world for the fear of the master of masters, the fear of the Lord of the world has settled in his heart. And he was just fearing he did not fear anything, any mishap, any hardship, any crisis in this world. He was just fearing the hereafter. Now, what happened to him? What happened to him? Obviously, such people are labeled as fanatics. What happened to this person who was obviously labeled as a fanatic by his people? What happened to him? Allah says in the verse 45, what happened to him is that Allah was Allah saved him while he was inviting the people. He said that whoever does an evil deed will not be recompensed except by the like thereof. But whoever does righteousness, where whether male or female, while he is a believer, those will enter paradise, being given provisions therein without any account. And oh, my people, how is it that I invite you to salvation while you invite me to the fire? You invite me to disbelieve in Allah and associate with him that of which I have no knowledge. And I invite you to the exalted in might, the perpetual forgiver. Assuredly, that to which you invite me has no response to a supplication in this world or in the hereafter. And indeed, your return is to Allah. And indeed, the transgressors will be the companions of fire. And you will remember what I now say to you. And I and trust my affairs to Allah. Indeed, Allah is seeing of his servants. So what Allah did in verse number 45, Allah says, so Allah protected him. So Allah protected him from the evils they plotted and the people of Pharaoh were enveloped by the worst of punishments. Verse 46, how were the people of Pharaoh punished? The fire, they are exposed. They are exposed. Allah says not in this verse that they will be exposed. Allah says they are exposed to it morning and evening. And on the day of judgment appears, it will be said, make the people of Pharaoh enter the severest punishment. That is on that day, they will be exposed to the punishment of hell fire. From here, we learn that the person who was the believer who stood up against the tyranny of the Pharaoh and who stood up as a supporter, as a helper, as a protector to Hazrat Musa salam, was saved by Allah. This is as Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has also promised that he said that three people Allah promises to help and to protect. The first of them is Mujahid fi sabilillah. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. So on the contrary, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he saved the Mujahid, the moment, and on the contrary, the nation of the disobedience, they were enveloped by the punishment. Now, in this verse number 46, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is explaining a twofold punishment of the people who were the transgressing nation. First is a punishment which they are being exposed to morning and evening. And second is the punishment which they will be subjected to after the decisions of the day of judgment. This verse number 46 and a similar few verses of Quran, they provide an indirect mention and an indirect proof of the torments of grave in the Quran. Because we know that in Quran, Allah has clearly talked about death, signs of the day of judgment, the events and scenes of uh, the hardships of the day of resurrection, the accountability of the day of judgment, the bridge over the hellfire, that is the bridge of Sirat. There have been narrations in detail regarding Jannah, regarding the hellfire, but regarding the grave, all that has been mentioned directly in the Quran is where Allah says, so that he will be then laid down in the grave. 
no more elaboration of the happenings of the events or of the torments in the grave has been mentioned in the Quran. Although uh, in many traditions of Prophet we get a detailed narration related to grave, the questions of the angels, the conditions of the torments and the blessings in the grave, all this in a detailed uh, form we get from the narrations and uh, from the traditions of Prophet Sallallahu But from this verse, which says that Pharaoh and his people, they are exposed to the fire morning and evening. And on the day of the judgment, they will be subjected to an even greater torment. If you relate from this, that there has been no accountability. There has been yet no accountability that will be on the day of judgment. There has been no weighing of the deeds. There has been no accountability. So now deciding and issuing of the decision, there has been no deciding and issuing of the decisions of the day of the judgment. So how come they being presented to the fire before the decision? This is, this is according to what Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has told that he said that for some, the grave will be a ditch of hellfire, and for some, it will be Riyadhul Jannah, the gardens of paradise. So this is exactly what the verse is also reconfirming the words of Hadith that Pharaoh and all his followers and the army, they have been subjected to this hell fire of the ditch of the grave currently and then on the day of judgment when there will be decision and when there will be issuing, um, issuing of the decisions of the day of judgment then they will be subjected to a greater uh, a greater torment on the day of judgment so this verse and similar verses in the quran they give an indirect proof of the torments of the grave and mention when they will argue within the fire, the weak will say to those who had been arrogant, indeed, we were only your followers. So will you relieve us of a share of the fire? Those who had been arrogant will say, indeed, all of us are in it. Indeed, Allah has judged between the servants. And those in the fire will say to the keepers of hell, supplicate your Lord to lighten for us a day from the punishment, they will say. Did did there not come to you your messengers with clear proofs? They will say, yes, they will reply, then supplicate yourselves, but the supplication of the disbelievers is not except in error. Indeed, we will support our messengers and those who believe during the life of this world and on the day when the witnesses will stand, the day their excuse will not benefit the wrongdoers and they will have the curse and they will have the worst home. And we had certainly given Musa salam guidance and we caused the children of Israel to inherit the scripture as guidance and as a reminder for those of understanding so do what so be patient indeed the promise of allah is truth and ask forgiveness for your sins and exalt allah with the praise of your lord in the evening and in the morning so many verses in quran does allah subhanahu wa ta'ala order all of us to supplicate in the morning and evening with what with all the supplications taught to us by prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam Indeed, those who dispute concerning the signs of Allah without any authority, having coming to them, there is not within their breast except pride, the extent of which they cannot reach. So seek refuge in Allah. Indeed, it is he who is the hearing and seeing. The creations of the heaven and the earth is greater than the creation of mankind, but most of the people do not know and not equal are the blind and seeing, nor are those who believe and do righteous deeds and the evildoers, little do you remember. Rabbana, innana amanna, faghfir lana zanubana waqina adhaab nar Indeed, <coughs> indeed the hour is coming, no doubt about it, but most of the people do not believe. 
ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ خديتنا وحب لنا من لدنك الرحمة إنك أنت الوهاب سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك سبحان ربك رب العزة يما يسفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين سمامين